dear students in today's class let me discuss kct 2020 physics question paper watch full video that may help you to score more in the upcoming cet examination okay without wasting the time let me move to the very first question that is the value of acceleration due to gravity at a height of 10 kilometer from the surface of the earth is x at what depth inside the earth is the value of acceleration due to gravity as the same value of x so here at a height of let me consider at this height at a height of 10 kilometer we have acceleration due to gravity that is gh equals to x now at a depth of that is at a depth of d we have acceleration due to gravity same as that of the acceleration due to gravity at a height of 10 kilometer now the question is we need to find out the depth so according to this question and then this diagram we can have gd equals to gh that is both are equal to x now we know that the expression for gd that is g of 1 minus d by r where r is the radius of the and g uh, gh equals to g of 1 minus 2h divided by r now g and g get cancels and if i bring 1 to the right side then 1 and 1 1 minus 1 will get cancelled minus and minus will get cancelled as well as r and r will get cancelled we'll get only d equals to 2h that is d equals to 2 times of height that is 2 into 10 kilometer so this is equals to 20 kilometer so option b would be the correct answer let me go for the next problem that is Young's modulus of a perfect rigid body is we know that the Young's modulus is equals to stress by strain so stress is equals to force per unit area divided by strain is change in the length divided by original length or else elongation produced divided by original length so now this is can be written like this f a into l by delta l so we know that in the case of perfect rigid body delta l is equals to zero that is nothing but the elongation produced in the perfect rigid body is equals to zero that is however force you are applying there won't be any change in the dimensions of the rigid body so therefore the elongation produced in the rigid body is zero so therefore Young's modulus equals to infinity that is anything by zero will become infinity so therefore option c would be the correct answer for this question now let me go for the next problem that is a wheel starting from rest gains an angular velocity of 10 radian per second after uniformly accelerated for 5 seconds the total angle through which it has turned is you need to find out the angle that is theta and here the wheel is starting from rest so therefore its angle initial angular velocity is zero and here this is the angular velocity of the wheel and it is uniformly accelerated for five seconds that is t we have an equation that is omega square minus omega naught square equals to two alpha theta so this is the equation of motion in the case of rotational motion Whereas in the case of linear motion, it will become v square minus u, u square is equals to 2s. But it is a rotational motion, so therefore we can write omega square minus omega naught square equals to 2 alpha theta. Here we know that omega naught is initial angular velocity that is 0, so therefore we could write only omega square equals to 2 alpha theta. So therefore theta equals to how much? Theta equals to omega square by 2 alpha. But we don't have alpha here, so that we can find out by using the equation of motion that is omega equals to omega naught plus alpha t here alpha omega naught is zero so therefore we could write omega equals to alpha alpha t so alpha equals to omega divided by t here omega is 10 
t is 5 so therefore it will become 2 2 radian per second square so therefore if i substitute here omega is omega square that is 10 square divided by 2 into alpha is 2 so therefore 100 divided by 4 this will become 25 radian so option a would be the correct answer for this question let me move to the next question that is iceberg floats in water with a part of it submerged what is the fraction of volume of iceberg submerged if the density of ice is 0 0.917 gram per cubic centimeter so let us assume like this so there is a iceberg which is submerged in the water now weight of the iceberg is acting in the downward direction that is mg weight of the iceberg so mass of the iceberg it is now so it is floating over floating the water so therefore because of the buoyant force so therefore buoyant force equals to that is weight of the water displaced weight of the water displaced by the submerged part of the iceberg so weight of the water displaced by the submerged part of the iceberg so this w dash let me write now here it is floating so therefore we could write weight i equals to buoyant force so here this is equals to mg and this can be written as mass of the water displaced by the submerged part of the water that is m dash g this mass of the iceberg so now we could write here g g get cancels so mass could be written as v volume of the iceberg into density of the iceberg this is equals to volume of the water displaced by the submerged part of the iceberg and density of the water so here v is the volume of the water displaced by the submerged part of the water sorry submerged part of the iceberg so therefore you could write now v i dash is the volume of iceberg submerged so therefore you could write here v i dash divided by v i volume of the iceberg can be written like this this is equals to density of ice divided by density of water now this is v i dash divided by v i v i dash is the volume of the iceberg submerged in the water and v i is the total volume of the iceberg so this is the fraction of volume of iceberg submerged so now this is equals to rho i that is density of the iceberg is 0 0.917 and as we know that the density of water is 1 gram per cubic centimeter so therefore it will become 0 0.917 so option a would be the correct answer for this okay let us go to the next question that is a sphere a cube and a thin circular plate all of same material and same mass initially heated to same high temperature are allowed to cool down under similar conditions then the plate will cool fastest and cube the slowest option b sphere will cool the fastest and cube the slowest the plate will cool the fastest and sphere the slowest the cube will cool the fastest and plate the slowest that means which one will cool fast and which one will cool slow that we need to find out here we have a sphere cube and a plate as we know that the area of the sphere is less than the cube and the area of the cube is less than the plate so therefore the area of the plate is larger and here this is smaller or least very very smallest so therefore according to the stephan's law we know that the energy radiated by a surface of emissivity epsilon and the area a and time t is given by e equals to epsilon area sigma t t to the power of 4 here the surface of emissivity that is related to the material 
here we have taken same material so therefore this is constant and here this is Stephen's constant and the time which is also same and then all sphere cube and circular plate all are heated to a same temperature so this is also constant so therefore the energy radiated by the surface is directly proportional to area of cross section so therefore here area of the plate is larger so therefore the plate will cool first so area this is fast whereas the the sphere will cool slow because of its less area because the energy radiated by the surface is directly proportional to area of cross section area is more for the plate so therefore it will cool fast and the area for the sphere is least for the least so therefore the sphere will cool slow so therefore in this option c would be the correct answer so therefore option c let me move to the next problem here in an adiabatic expansion of an ideal gas the product of pressure and volume decreases increases remains constant and at first increases and then decreases here in adiabatic process we have seen that pv power gamma equals to constant here by multiplying and dividing by v we will get like this that is pv that is product of pressure and volume will get by multiplying and dividing by v then v to the power of gamma minus 1 it will become because 1 v is in the denominator so therefore v to the power of gamma minus 1 this is equals to c so therefore here we can write pv is inversely proportional to 1 by v power gamma minus 1 so therefore as this is expansion so v to the power of gamma minus 1 will increase whenever v power gamma minus 1 increases product of pressure and volume decreases so therefore option a would be the correct answer for this question okay let us move to the next question a certain amount of heat energy is supplied to a monoatomic uh, ideal gas which expands at constant pressure what fraction of heat energy is converted into work here we need to find out the fraction of heat energy converted into work so we know that the fraction of heat energy converted into work that is dw by dq is equals to 1 minus 1 by gamma here gamma that is the ratio of specific heat capacity at constant pressure and at constant volume that is 5 by 3 for monoatomic gas so for monoatomic gas it is 5 by 3 monoatomic gas that is gamma value for monoatomic gas is 5 by 3 in the same way for diatomic gas it is 7 by 5 and for triatomic gas triatomic gas non-linear if it is non-linear then the value is 4 by 3 and if it is linear triatomic gas linear then it is 9 by 7 so for monoatomic ideal gas it is so therefore gamma value for monoatomic gas is 5 by 3 so on substituting here 1 by 5 by 3 so 3 will go to the nominator so therefore 1 minus 3 by 5 so we will get 5 minus 3 2 by 5 is the fraction of heat energy converted into work so therefore option c would be the correct answer so if you don't know this equation at the time we can make use of the first law of thermodynamics that is dq equals to du by or du plus dw so on dividing by dq on both the sides will get like this so this will become 
So 1 minus du by dq plus dw by dq. So therefore dw by dq, dw by dq is equal to dq by dq is 1 minus du by dq. du by dq is the fraction of heat energy converted into the internal energy. So this can be written like this 1 minus du is nothing but n cv at constant volume it is because it is a internal energy there won't be any change in the volume so therefore n cv delta t divided by dq that is n cp delta t so therefore we will get 1 minus cv by cp so this is nothing but 1 minus 1 divided by cp by cv as you know that cp by cv is nothing but gamma so therefore we can write 1 minus 1 by gamma so this is what dw by dq on substituting the gamma value for more they are asking here for monoatomic gas so therefore we are taking pi by 3 so we'll get the fraction of heat as we converted into work is 2 by 5 okay let me move to the next problem that is a tray of mass 12 kg is supported by two identical identical springs has shown in the figure when the tray is pressed down slightly and then released it executes simple harmonic motion with a time period of 1.5 second the spring constant of each spring is we know that the time period of spring which is executing simple harmonic motion is 2 pi square root of m by k here more than one springs are there so therefore we have to take the effective spring constant that is k so 2 pi we have here two springs so therefore i'll take here 2 k so here 2 k so therefore we can get t equals to 2 pi square root of m by 2 k so squaring on both the sides we will get t square equals to 4 pi square m by 2 k so therefore 2 1 ja, 2 2 ja. so therefore make it k as a subject formula so therefore k equals to 2 pi square m divided by t square and substituting the values that is 2 the pi square is nothing but it is very nearly equals to 10 let me take 10 and equals to m the mass of the spring equals to how much 12 kg divided by t square so here t is 1.5 so if i take this one so 2 into 10 into this much so we will get 240 divided by 2.25 so therefore this will be equals to 106.66 so which is very nearly equals to in the options we can see the nearest value for this is 105 newton per so this is very nearly equals to 105 newton per meter so therefore option c would be the correct answer for this question okay let me move to the next question that is a train whistling at constant frequency n is moving towards a station at constant speed v the train goes past a stationary observer on the station the frequency of the sound as heard by the observer is plotted as function of time t here the frequency of the sound as heard by the observer is apparent frequency so we know that an expression for the apparent frequency n when the source is moving towards the stationary observer when the source is moving towards here we have two cases the first case is the source is moving towards the stationary observer in the second case the source is moving away from the stationary observer so therefore when the source is moving towards the stationary observer the apparent frequency is equals to real frequency times v by v minus vs here v is the speed of the sound and vs is the speed of the source that is speed of the source so here the speed of the source is the capital v so let me write here capital v that is v so this is the first case in the second case we can see that that is in the second case the apparent frequency that is the source is moving away from the station observer for that we can write f of v divided by v plus 
which is having the constant speed but which is moving away from the station observer we can so therefore we could take plus v so this is the expression for the upper end frequency of the sound when the source is moving away from the station observer so by these two equations here you see in the denominator v minus capital v and here v plus capital v so therefore it is clearly shown that f1 dash is greater than f2 dash so as we know that the upper end frequency is independent of the time function so let me take this is the time and then this is upper end frequency the upper end frequency is independent of time function so therefore see here the f1 is greater so initially when the train is moving towards the stationary observer the upper end frequency will be here and then it does not depend on the time function so therefore immediately drops and then the f2 we can see that it is less than the f1 or that is we can draw this is the correct graph for this that is upper end frequency of the sound as heard by the observer as function of the time is this graph so therefore option d would be the correct answer for this question okay let me go to the next problem that is a point charge q is placed at the corner of a cube of side a as shown in the figure what is the electric flux through the phase a b c d here is the cube and the charge is present at the corner of this cube to find out the flux through this cube we need to assume the gaussian surface that is the enclosed surface this to apply the gas law this charge should be enclosed by the surface so therefore let me assume the some more cubes to enclose this surface so so now there is a problem. the big cube is formed so therefore flux through the big cube is equal to the flux through the big cube equals to according to Gauss's law q by ups naught but this big cube having small eight cubes which is consisting consisting of eight cubes so therefore this flux is distributed among eight cubes so therefore we can write q divided by eight ups naught this is the flux through the small cube that is a b c d e f g h now here we have six faces let me write that is uh, the faces which are having the corner a at which the charge is present let me consider first the faces which are having the corner a at which the charge is present so we can write the face a b c d and the face a b g h a b g h and the face a d e h so the face a d e h all these faces are having the corner a which has the charge q so therefore we can see that the area vector of these surfaces and the electric field produced by this charge is perpendicular to each other that is the dot product of the component of the electric field and the area vector of these surfaces is equals to zero so therefore the flux through these surfaces that is a b c d a b g h and a d h equals to zero and let me consider the surfaces which are not having the corner at which the charge is present that is b c f g b c f g and d e uh, c d e f it is c d e f and e f g h it is e f g h now we know that the total flux through this cube is q dot by eight epsilon this flux is distributed among these three surfaces so therefore the flux through the surface each surface that is bcef cdef and efgh 
which are not having the corner A. That should be you know, so. Therefore, here it will be distributed. There are three charges, so therefore, one by three times the total flux through this small cube that is Q by eight epsilon. So therefore, the flux through this surface Q divided by twenty-four epsilon. So keep in mind that the flux through the surfaces BCFG, CD, EF, and EFGH, which are not having the corner at which the charge is present, having the flux Q divided by twenty-four epsilon naught. Okay. Now. So in the question they are asking you to find out electric flux through the phase ABCD. So therefore option A would be the correct answer for this question. So because here ABCD, ABH, ABGH and ADH so through the surfaces A, all these three surfaces the flux would be zero. So therefore option A would be the correct answer. So let us see the different uh, situations or different cases here. Here you can see that if the charge is present at the corner here, if the charge is present at this point, just now we have seen that the flux through the surfaces A, B, C, D and A, B, G, H and A, D, E, H. All these surfaces are having the corner E at which the charge is present. So therefore you need to remember that the flux through the surfaces which are having the corner at which the charge is present equals to zero because the dot product of the component of the electric field and the area vector of these surfaces would be equals to zero for that reason the flux through these surfaces would be equals to zero in the same way if the charge is present at the edges of any side that is if the charge is present at this particular point then keep in mind that the surfaces which are having the having the side a b if the charge is present at this corner if the surface having the same corner then the flux through those surfaces would be equals to zero okay if the charge is present here next we can find out the flux passing through the different surfaces by applying the gases uh, by by assuming the uh, Gaussian surface that is imaginary surface okay just to keep in mind that if, th if they ask you to find out the flux through the surfaces which are having the side a b or which are having the side at which the charge is present then the flux passing through that surface would be equals to zero in the same way let me go for the another case if the charge is present at the center of any surface then the flux would be equals to zero on which the charge is present that is a b c d the flux through a b c d surface would be zero on which the charge is present so therefore if the charge is present at this particular point then the flux through the surface e e f g h would be zero but the flux through the other surfaces can be found by applying the Gaussian theorem or Gauss theorem or else by assuming the Gaussian surface for this okay let me go for the next problem that is the electric field lines on the left have the twice uh, sorry have twice the separation twice the separation on the on those on the right as shown in this figure if the magnitude of the field at a is 40 volt per meter what is the force on 20 micro coulomb charge kept at b here at this point a we have an electric field that is ea is equals to 40 volt per meter so at this point we need to find out that that b that is electric field at b would be equals to a by 2 because the separation between these electric field lines is twice on those the right so therefore here the separation is twice so therefore electric field is decreases by 2 okay so therefore we can write electric field at this particular point b is ea by 2 so we know that the force experienced by the charge in the electric field equals to e q so the force experienced by the charge at 
B equals to electric field at B and charge. So E B equals to E A by 2. So Q. So we know that E A equals to 40 divided by 2 and charge is how much? 20 micro coulomb. So 2 1 ja, 2 10. So therefore 400 into 10 power minus 6. This can be written like this. That is 4 into 10 to the power of minus 4 newton. So therefore option A would be the correct answer. Okay. Let me go for the next question. That is an infinitely long thin straight wire has uniform charge density of 1 by 4 into 10 to the power of minus 2 coulomb per meter. What is the magnitude of electric field at a distance 20 centimeter from the axis of the wire? We know that an expression for the electric field at a point due to the infinitely long thin straight wire having uniform charge density that is lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon naught. This is the expression for the electric field due to the infinitely long thin straight wire having uniform charge density okay so now let me write we can write this one as 2 lambda divided by 4 pi epsilon naught isn't it now here we have 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught so 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught value is 9 times 10 to the power of 9 into 2 lambda 2 into lambda is how much the uniform charge density that is 1 by 4 into 10 power minus 2 divided by the r that is 20 centimeter 20 centimeters 10 to the power of minus 2 so 10 to the power of minus 2 10 to the power of minus get cancelled and then here 1 by 4 into 2 is 0 0.5 0 0.5 into 9 0 0.5 into 9 is 4.5 0 0.5 into 9 is 4.5 divided by 20 so therefore this would this will be equals that is 10 to the power of 9 we have here and this will be it equals to 0 0.225 10 of 9. So therefore if I express this one to the one decimal place 2.225 2.225 2 2 into 10 to of 8 Newton per column. So therefore option C would be the correct answer. Okay. So let me go for the next problem that is a dipole moment P and the moment of inertia I is placed in a uniform electric field E. If it is displaced slightly from its stable equilibrium position, the period of oscillation of the dipole is. Whenever the dipole is placed in the uniform electric field, we know that it experiences a torque that is given by torque equals to PE sin theta. But here they said it will start to oscillate to get oscillate there must be restoring force so therefore sorry there must be restoring torque see here restoring torque is given by minus p sin theta so and this dipole is slightly displaced so therefore here theta is very very small when the theta is a small sin theta becomes theta so therefore p theta you can write so here we know that torque can be written as i alpha so now alpha equals to minus p e theta divided by i now whenever the dipole oscillates it executes simple harmonic motion so therefore alpha equals to minus omega square theta so therefore minus p e theta divided by i here theta theta get cancels and minus and minus get cancels so we will get omega square is equals to p e by p upon i so therefore here so or else we can write directly omega equals to root p e divided by i so now omega is nothing but 2 pi by t so this is equals to root p e divided by so therefore we can write directly that is t equals to 2 pi square root of we have to take reciprocal because we are taking the reciprocal of this one that is t 2 pi divided by t 
can be written like this t equals to 2 pi root i divided by p so therefore option b would be the option uh, what it is that is option b would be the correct answer for this okay let me go for the next question the difference between the equivalent capacitances of two identical capacitors connected in parallel that is cp to that in series that is cp minus cs is equals to 6 microfarad the value of capacitance of each capacitor whenever we connect the identical capacitors in parallel so we know that cp equals to c1 plus c2 so therefore if these two are identical it will become 2c and then cs is equals to c1 c2 divided by c1 plus c2 so therefore if they are identical it will become c squared divided by 2c c squared divided by 2c is nothing but c divided by 2 this is cs so on substituting that is cp is 2c minus cs equals to c by 2 this equals to 6 microfarad now 2c by this is equals to if i take lcm at that time it will become 4c minus c divided by 2 equals to 6 microfarad so therefore 2 if it comes this side it will become 12 and then 4c minus c is 3c equals to 12 microfarad so therefore c equals to 4 microfarad so therefore option c would be the correct answer that is the value of capacitance of each capacitor is 4 microfarad okay let me go for the next problem that is a figure shows the three points a b c a b c in a region of uniform electric field e the line a b is perpendicular to b c is parallel to the field lines then which of the following holds good v a v b v c represents the electric potential at points a b c respectively here you can observe that a and b are equidistant from the source charge so let me take here source charge is at a distance at a distance so therefore we are getting the electric field lines which are parallel so these two points that is a and b they are at the same distance so therefore if they are at the same distance at the time the electric potential at a is equals to electric potential at b but the c which is far from the source of electric field so therefore the vc compared to v and vb it is less so therefore we can write va equals to vb greater than vc okay so here you have to assume that there is a source charge at a distance so these two a e and b are at same distance so therefore v a equals to vb whereas the c is at a larger distance compared to a and b so therefore at c we can we can have electric potential which is less than v and vb so therefore we can say that va is equals to vb that is equals to that is greater than vc so option here option b would be the correct answer va equals to vb that is greater than vc okay let us move to the uh, next question when a soap bubble is charged its radius increases its radius decreases the radius remains same the radius may increase or decrease let me consider a soap bubble and then which is having the radius r and suppose if it is charged at the time we know that the charges which are present on the surface of the soap bubble will start to repel each other because of their same nature that is positive and positive will get repelled by like this and then here this one will get repelled then here there is a repulsive force between the positive and negative charge so therefore there will be repulsion between the charges 
this charge will repel this charge that is opposite charge also will be getting repelled so therefore what will happen its radius will go on increasing for that reason option a would be the correct answer okay let us move to the next problem that is a hot filament liberates an electron with zero initial velocity there is a hot filament which is liberating an electron with zero initial velocity and the anode potential is 1200 volt so there is an anode potential which is having the potential that is 1200 volt now we need to find out speed of the electron see we know that the kinetic energy of the electron which is ejected out from this filament that is kinetic energy is equals to the v q that is charge so this can be written as kinetic energy is nothing but of mass of the electron and velocity of the electron so that is v the here only one electron we have so therefore we can write v e so we know that v square is equal. so therefore v square equals to 2 v e v is the electric potential divided by so v equals to so that is nothing but v equals to you know, directly that is square root of 2 v e divided by m on substituting the values it is root 2 into that is v equals to how much 1200 volt and e is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 divided by mass of the electron so that is 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 31 kc so if I simplify this that is V equals to we know that that is uh, root 4 to 2 into 10 to the power of 12 we will get this nothing but whenever we take the square root we will get that is 20.54 into 10 to the power of 6 and so we can write to the one decimal place that is V is equals to 2.054 into 10 to the power of 7. So, therefore, 10 to the power of 7 we have here, it is 10 to the power of 7. So, here 2.054, which is very nearly equals to 2.1. So, therefore, option C would be the correct answer for this question. Okay. Now, let me go for the one more problem that is a metal rod of length 10 centimeter and a rectangular cross section cross section of one centimeter into half centimeter is connected to a battery across opposite faces the resistance will be maximum when the battery is connected across one centimeter into half centimeter faces and it is maximum when the battery is connected to the 10 centimeter into half centimeter faces 10 centimeter into half centimeter faces and same irrespective of three phases we know that the resistance is equals to rho l resistivity length divided by area of cross section that is nothing but r is inversely proportional to area of cross section now in the first option the area of the cross section when the battery is connected across these two phases the area is 1 into half that is 0 0.5 centimeter square and here 10 into half that is 5 centimeter square and here 10 into 1 centimeter so 10 centimeter square so among these 0 0.5 5 and 10 centimeter square 0 0.5 centimeter square is the least area so therefore whenever the battery is connected to 1 centimeter into half centimeter faces it will offer maximum resistance so therefore option a would be the correct answer okay So next, a car has a fresh storage battery of EMF 12 volt and an internal and internal resistance 2 into 10 to the minus 2 ohm. If the, if the starter motor draws a current of 80 amps, then the terminal voltage when the starter is on, is, we know that the terminal voltage equals to EMF of the battery minus 
current drawn by the motor then r internal resistance of the battery so therefore v here terminal potential difference so here the emf of the battery is 12 volt minus current is 80 ampere and the internal resistance is 2 into 10 to the power of minus 12 so if i simplify this 12 minus 8 into 2 that is 160 into 10 power minus 2 this is nothing but 12 minus 0 0.16 so this is equals to this is equals to 10.4 volt so option c would be the correct answer for this question okay let us move to the next problem that is a potentiometer has a uniform wire of a length 5 meter a battery uh, let me take a potentiometer has a uniform wire here is a potentiometer wire that is having a length of 5 meter length of 5 meter and uh, a battery of emf 10 volt the battery of emf 10 volt is connected uh, uh, 10 volt and negligible internal resistance is connected between its ends that is e equals to 10 volt and negligible internal resistance a secondary cell so we have one more cell that is one more connected to the uh, secondary cell connected to the circuit gives the balancing length at 200 centimeters so let me take one more cell that is having emf e2 and which gives us the balancing length of how much 200 centimeter 200 centimeter is nothing but 2 meter okay this much angle. we know that from the principle of uh, potentiometer emf of the shell is directly proportional to balancing length so therefore we can write here e2 by e1 is equals to l2 by l1 so e2 equals to so therefore e2 equals to l2 is 2 meter l1 is 5 meter and e1 if i bring this side e1 equals to 10 volt so therefore e2 is equals to 4 volt so option a would be the correct answer okay so okay uh, let me discuss the remaining uh, questions in the uh, next session okay you can see all those uh, questions and uh, the detailed discussion in the next video okay thanks for watching have a nice day thank you